The movie starts with Fluger, an elderly man who's had a bit too much to drink, digging up a grave adorned with special symbols. He's behaving all ritualistic. After some digging, Fluger manages to retrieve a person's skull from the grave. Suddenly, the skull starts emitting white smoke, which hits Fluger in the face. He wakes up feeling groggy but happy, as if he accomplished a big mission. Now, the scene shifts to a teenager named Kelly shopping at a convenience store. Here's what you need to know about Kelly. He has an unusual habit of munching on paper, earning him the nickname Trash Can from his classmates who like to tease him. While he's looking at the stuff on the shelves, he bumps into his old friend and crush, Dominique, but he's too shy to say hello. Outside the store, some school bullies named Nelson, Tony, Reed, and Brad decide to hassle Kelly. They make fun of him for eating strange things like paper and styrofoam. Just when things are getting messy, Dominique steps in and tells them to stop. Of course, this only gets the bullies even more worked up, and they push Kelly's face into a trash can. Luckily, the store owner intervenes, breaks up the commotion, and chases the bullies away. After all this drama, Dominique offers Kelly a ride to school. But her friend, Sarah, who owns the car, won't let him in. She says she doesn't want her car to get all dirty. What a letdown, right? In the next scene, Kelly arrives at school only to discover that the bullies recorded the store incident and posted it online. As he walks down the hallway, all the other students start making fun of him. When school ends, Kelly goes back home, and his mom, Bernice, asks him about his day. He doesn't mention the bullying and simply says, Dominique talked to him for the first time. Hearing this, Bernice gets excited and suggests he ask Dominique out. Mom's always looking out for us, right? Meanwhile, there's an indigenous man named Red Elk who comes across the grave that Fluger messed with earlier. He starts saying some prayers. It turns out that there was a hidden power in that grave, and now it's gone. Red Elk is pretty upset about it because it was his job to protect it. The next morning, Kelly gets sick from eating all that paper and styrofoam. Bernice calls the family doctor, who recommends that Kelly see a therapist for his unusual eating habits. The doctor also hints that Kelly might be acting strangely because there are no male figures in the house. But the truth is, the doctor has a crush on Bernice, and he's just trying to get closer to her. On the same day, Fluger is in town, bragging about his healing abilities. He shows off by relieving an old lady's joint pain. And guess what? Bernice happens to be there, and she's really impressed by his skills. She thinks he might be able to help Kelly, so she invites him to their house. While Bernice goes to get her car, Red Elk approaches Fluger and informs him that those powers weren't meant for him. He extends an offer to assist Fluger in getting rid of his healing abilities, but Fluger declines, resulting in a scuffle where Red Elk accidentally injures himself. These powers, obtained from the grave, have a protective nature around their possessor. Despite Red Elk's warning regarding the potential consequences of these powers, Fluger brushes off his concerns and departs. Some time later, Fluger arrives at Bernice's house with the intention of healing Kelly. However, during his attempt, he experiences an unusual pain and hastily retracts his hand. He excuses himself, retreats to the bathroom, and consumes a special drug before making another effort. Regrettably, in his second endeavor, he accidentally burns Kelly's chest with his cigarette and collapses, succumbing on the spot. Interestingly, as Fluger passes away, Kelly's condition improves dramatically, and he rises with newfound energy. The police arrive and remove Fluger's body, attributing his demise to a cardiac arrest. Kelly observes that the burn on his chest has inexplicably healed. It becomes evident that Fluger's healing powers have been transferred to Kelly. The subsequent day, Kelly inadvertently cuts his finger while repairing his bicycle. Yet something extraordinary occurs the wound autonomously heals and vanishes instantly. When he attempts to recount this to his mother, she remains skeptical. On his way to school, he encounters Dominique and Sarah, both astounded by his newfound health. Later, Reed, Nelson's brother, approaches Kelly and unjustly assaults him. Astonishingly, as Reed strikes Kelly, he experiences the pain himself while Kelly remains unharmed. Reed even tries to harm Kelly with a wooden block, but it rebounds, causing Reed to injure himself. Realizing he cannot best this transformed version of Kelly, Reed flees with bruises on his face. That evening, Gus, Reed's father, and the school's football coach visits Kelly's home to ascertain what transpired with his son. Kelly elucidates that Reed attempted to harm him, but suffered injuries instead. Gus remains incredulous and engages in an argument with Bernice. Nevertheless, Bernice encourages Gus to depart and firmly shuts the door in his face. Later, Kelly confides in his mother regarding his newfound ability to transfer pain, ensuring their protection from harm. He validates this by enduring the heat of a cigarette lighter without sustaining any injury to his palm. In the following school day, Kelly's imagination runs wild when he discovers Dominique's hairband. 
He envisions intimate scenarios involving both Dominique and Sarah. Remarkably, the sensations stemming from his fantasies begin to affect Dominique and Sarah in real life, leading to unforeseen reactions. Sarah even exclaims in delight within the classroom. Subsequently, at a nighttime gathering, Nelson behaves improperly by lifting Dominique without her consent. This infuriates Kelly, prompting him to confront Nelson and insist that he set Dominique down. Just as the boys are getting ready for a face-off, Gus steps in like a hero and separates them. Then, he turns to Kelly and warns him that someday he'll uncover Kelly's superpower and put an end to it. After the party winds down, while everyone's on their way home, Brad and his crew come across Kelly, who's riding his bike. Still upset from their earlier altercation, they decide to give him a little nudge with their car. But as luck would have it, Brad loses control and ends up running over Kelly with the car. It looks pretty grim, but when the dust settles, it turns out Brad's head got squashed, and he meets his maker while Kelly miraculously remains unscathed. A crowd gathers, and Kelly confides in Dominique about his special ability on the down low. Nelson and his gang try to deceive the police, concocting a story about Brad swerving to protect Kelly because he was in the middle of the road. However, Officer Adler sniffs out the truth and absolves Kelly of any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, Red Elk catches wind of Fluger's passing and pays Kelly a visit at his workplace. They have a heartfelt conversation, and Kelly spills the beans about Fluger's treatment. The next day, Kelly and Dominique are having a meal at a cafe, chatting about movies and whatnot. Little does Dominique know, she's got a soft spot for Kelly and secretly hopes he'll invite her to watch a movie together. Surprise, surprise. Kelly takes the plunge, and they agree to catch a movie soon. Meanwhile, Nelson and his pals are seething with anger over Kelly's easy recovery from the car mishap. They decide it's payback time, and they're determined to teach him a lesson he won't forget. Later that night, Nelson and the gang get the scoop on Kelly and Bernice's plans. They're waiting for Bernice to head out for her night shift, but wouldn't you know it, she falls ill suddenly and decides to skip work. Seeing his unwell mom, Kelly steps up and heads into town to fetch some medicine. Nelson and his crew spot a car taking off, thinking it's Bernice, so they decide to spook her a bit. They attach Kelly's trailer house to their truck and give it some gas. The problem is, they didn't unhook it properly, so they drag the whole thing along, causing Bernice to tumble off the couch. They can't detach the chain correctly, so they leave it hanging from the truck after wrecking the trailer. Thanks to their antics, a gas pipe springs a leak in the kitchen, filling the place with gas. Startled, Bernice tries to escape but stumbles over a lamp and takes a fall. Unfortunately, the lamp catches fire, igniting the gas, and kaboom! A massive explosion. After a while, Kelly arrives at the scene and rushes into the trailer to rescue his mom. Tragically, he's too late, as Bernice has already passed away. The whole experience shakes Kelly to his core, and he mourns his mother's death amidst the blaze. After some time, Officer Adler notices burn marks on Kelly's body and takes him to the hospital. In the next scene, Red Elk approaches Adler at the hospital and tells him about Kelly's special power. He suggests discussing it with Kelly, but Adler thinks it's not the right time to talk about ancient stories during this tough period in Kelly's life. Understanding the situation, Red Elk tells Adler to contact him when the time is right. The next day, with his burn marks miraculously healed, Kelly goes directly to his mother's funeral, supported by Dominique. She reassures him that crying doesn't make him weak and that his mother will always be proud of him. Kelly then shares his plan to leave town, which disappoints Dominique. After a heartfelt kiss, she departs. Afterward, Kelly visits Fluger's grave in the same cemetery and starts munching on a wild weed growing there, hoping it will take away his powers. But as soon as he chews it, he feels queasy and starts puking. Sarah, who happens to be nearby, watches from a distance. Later, Officer Adler drives Kelly to social services and discusses his mother's accident with him. Kelly becomes convinced that the trailer fell before the gas explosion on purpose, and someone deliberately pulled it to break the support. At the same time, Nelson and his friends are driving in their truck with no remorse for their actions. They're heading to the river bend to unwind. On the way, they encounter Adler driving Kelly out of town and taunt him. When our boy notices the truck, he immediately realizes that they are the ones who are responsible for his mother's death. Hence, without wasting any time, he jumps out of the moving car and stealthily pursues them to the river bend. Later, while Tucker swims and the others playfully throw stones at him, Kelly slowly grabs Tucker's shirt and uses it to strangle himself. This leads to Tucker struggling to breathe and stay afloat. Ultimately, he drowns in the river as Nelson and the others look on in horror. They immediately rush to help him, but it is too late. The bully has died. Kelly then arrogantly reveals himself as responsible for Tucker's death. He attempts to grab Nelson's shirt, but just then, Officer Adler arrives at the scene. 
Kelly quickly runs away to avoid any trouble, and the bullies try their best to explain. What happened? However, Adler finds the story hard to believe, and he instead starts suspecting them of their friend's murder. That night, Kelly meets Dominique and admits his plan to avenge his mother's death. However, she suggests that getting Nelson and the others to confess is better than resorting to violence. Kelly also agrees to her words, and they share a close moment together. The next day, Kelly purposely provokes one of the bullies, Tony, in chemistry class, hoping to make him confess to Bernice's murder. At first, the bully controls himself, but when Kelly makes fun of his girlfriend, Sarah, he loses his cool and throws acid at Kelly. Unfortunately, because of his powers, Tony ends up burning himself and dies on the spot. Witnessing all this, Dominique gets enraged at Kelly, compelling him to leave. At night, a grieving Sarah meets Nelson, and they conspire to avenge Tony's death. Here, she informs him about a vine from the cemetery that made Kelly vomit. Together, they then head to the graveyard to retrieve it and use it as a weapon against Kelly. The next day, Gus takes his sons to football practice, where Adler notices the chain used by the bullies on Gus' truck. He questions Nelson and Reed about it, but they deny having information. Just then, Kelly arrives at the practice ground with an electric drill, wearing a piece of Nelson's clothing. He then threatens to harm himself, until Nelson confesses his crimes. However, the bully is prepared and he has brought weed juice from the cemetery. As Kelly starts drilling, Nelson sprays the weed juice on him, stopping his progress for a moment. Adler pleads with Kelly to stop, but he drills his knees, hurting Nelson until he confesses. Right then, Dominique arrives, convincing Kelly to halt the action. Amidst the chaos, Gus steals the gun from Adler and in a fit of rage, shoots Kelly. To his bad luck, he and Nelson get shot in return and the two die on the spot. After the incident, Dominique convinces Kelly to give up his powers and return to normal. Adler also decides to help Kelly and takes them and Red Elk to Fluger's Cemetery, where a ritual is performed. They dig the ancient grave in Red Elk, mentions that Kelly needs to die to release the powers. Hearing this, Kelly attempts to flee, but a police officer shoots him, accidentally, shooting Dominique and himself as well. In a real nail-biter, Kelly plants one last smooch on Dominique just before she bites the dust. Then. In a move that's even weirder than a cat wearing a top hat, he chose down on Fluger's heart to put the kibosh on his powers. But wait, there's more. Adler gets trigger happy and turns Kelly into a human sieve. In the final act, some cops scoop up Dominique and Kelly's lifeless husks into a van. Plot twist time. Out of the blue, on the ride, Dominique springs back to life. She's like a cat with nine lives and a shiny new trick she snagged Kelly's healing mojo. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe Mango Recap for more video like this and help the channel grow.